Okay, my name is Paul Hooper and I'm the founder, the lead developer of F of X. I'm the world's laziest X maths teacher. And that means two things. The first thing is, when it gets down to it, I'm one of you. I've done it, I've stood at the front of the class, I've talked to the kids and I've, done, I've had the workload. The other thing is, everything about our products is designed to save, well originally, me time. But now it's designed to save you time. Um, so if you see something and you think, why has he done it that way? It's usually because I want to save you a bit of time. Because when it gets down to it, that's the, your most precious resource as a teacher. So if you know about FX Draw, FX Equation, for those, the, the lost souls, FX Draw is a program that's designed to draw pretty pictures for maths tests and exams. That's how it started. Uh, it's sort of grown in scope over 30 years where people have said, wouldn't it be great if it could do such and such? So we've merrily gone along and added that idea. So uh, a couple of years ago, someone, uh, I was somewhere in Sydney, I can't remember now, uh, said, I really want to draw match sticks, match stick diagrams. So there's a tool to draw match sticks. Um, or I want to draw Pascal's triangle. So there's a tool to draw Pascal's triangle. I want to generate some uh, randomly scattered bivariate data that's going to fit this particular line of regression. So there's a tool to do that. It's all there to save you some time. That's the underlying software that's been around for you know, some of the codes 30 years old. And we've, I think, if we went and did a calculation, about 85% of schools in Australia at some stage have held a license for our products. Uh, it doesn't mean they're still using them, uh, but uh, it's been around. So the question is this new idea that we had, uh, and what is multidocs? Well, multidocs are an idea to save you some time. And when it gets down to it, they're just documents, word documents. Most, most teachers in most places around the world, uh, if they do something for their classroom, a test or exam, they're using Word. Uh, I know there's some people who use Google Sheet, Google Docs and uh, other variations, but the vast bulk of people we do deal with are uh, handling Word. So Multidocs is about Word. And a Multidocs document is just something like this. It's just a document I've typed up. It's got a, uh, a few diagrams that have come out of FX Draw. And this area here is a, uh, an equation that's come out of FX equation. But it's just a, it's a Word document. You can type anything you like. The big difference is, with a multi-doc, we give you the ability to push a button and get, get a new version of the question. Right? Um, and it's as simple as pushing one button. If you've got a big exam, a three-hour exam, uh, you can load it up. If, if someone spent the time to make it a multi-doc, you can load it up, you can push this regenerate all button that's uh, here. You, it takes about, for a three hour exam, it takes about 15 minutes because there's a whole heap of negotiation goes on. So you go away, you make a cup of coffee, uh, you come back, and at the end you've got a new version of the paper. That's a basic idea. And there's a whole heap that's going on behind that, and that's what we're going to discuss today. But what I want to do is provide a, a, for, a, a method for you to create one test that you can give to the morning group, a different version that you give to the afternoon group, have another version that you give to the kids who are away on rowing camp. Next year, when you want to create some revision material for the test that you write, you do it again and give them another copy. Um, as many copies as you like. And it's really easy to create a uh, multi-doc uh, which has billions of variations available. And I know in WA, uh, some of the exam providers who are providing the big end of year exams uh, commercially, they're starting to look at producing them using this technology for the simple reason that it allows them to create as many copies as they need for each school uh, so that uh, they don't have that security issue that comes up. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got a multi-doc. This has been written as a multi-doc and a multi-doc you might push the regenerate button and turn that into that. Uh, so it's a different, a different parabola different solution, different y-intercept, um, different question for the kid. Now, they're loosely equivalent. They've got uh, two intercepts, it's inverted, and that's actually probably the biggest problem with multidocs, is designing questions which are equivalent. 
So when you push the have another go button, uh, you don't get something that just degenerates into a black hole of zero over zero or becomes trivial for the co student to solve or so difficult that you know that group can't solve it but the other group can. So designing the questions is quite a skill. So let's keep going. Um, the, other ver the other advantage of multidocs is we've been hooking into Word for 30 years. Uh, we used to do it using a really old technology called uh, OLE. Uh, Microsoft hates it. We hate it. It's buggy, it uh, causes problems, um, but teachers love it because they put a, a, an FX draw diagram into their document and later on they come along and double click on it and it opens up and they go, yay, I can edit it and it goes back. And when it dies and something goes wrong, they swear and cuss at me. It's really not my fault. But um, yeah, it's this old buggy technology. And the other problem with the technology is it didn't run on Macs. So when schools started using Macs, we, we just couldn't offer that sort of interaction. This new technology that we've based uh, around Multidocs is cross-platform. It's more reliable. It gets around the OLE issue, and it's faster. Once you actually get used to it, uh, the o old OLE system, you'd double click, and it'd fire up FX equation and load it in, and you'd have a look, and then you'd push the button, and it'd take its time and go back in. It was just a bit clunky and slow. This is much faster. OK, let's say you say, oh, that sounds really good. Uh, I want to have a go at this multi-docs thing. Uh, you've got to get ready for it. It's not a trivial decision because it's a slightly different way of using the product. So if you're the sort of person who's used it for years on a Windows machine, you're going to be doing something different. Uh, and as you know, getting teachers to do something different can be fun. I'm a teacher. <laughs> okay, the first step is to go to our website and download today's copy of the FX Draw Tools Multidocs Edition. You'll notice the very top of Classic Edition below. That's the old system. If you want to stay with the old system and ignore Multidocs, fine, go for it. Um, but we're moving on, and hopefully you will too. The Multidocs Edition. Uh, download today's one. Don't say, oh, I downloaded it last week. Uh, because we are constantly improving, and particularly with Multidocs, it's, it's, a, it's a real dynamic environment at the moment because someone says uh, it's having this problem or why don't you do this, and we, we're adding things and improving things all the time. Once you, oh there it is, Multidocs. Once you install it, uh, the chances are if you install the Multidocs edition, uh, it will automatically put the F of X tab on your copy of Word. Uh, there is a slight chance, particularly if your IT department is anal, uh, not very accommodating, uh, there is a slight chance it won't and you might have to go to a little, little bit more trouble. Um, but uh, we've got better and better at working around the restrictions that they put on us. Uh, in any of the products, if you go to the help menu and down to the option manage office integration, you can actually force the integration to occur. It still might be stymied by the IT gods, but uh, it's as good, as good a chance as you can get. Um, and down the bottom, you can see that there's still the classic integration. Uh, you can actually have both running on your computer if you really want. Um, yeah, a bit of a glutton for punishment, but okay, you can do it if you wish. The next step is to, instead of uh, running FX Draw or FX Equation, go and run F of X Multidocs, and it'll be a new app on your computer. Uh, all that does is it goes along and starts up FX Draw and FX Equation in the background uh, and gets them ready knowing that they're going to be used for Multidocs. So this is a quick way of getting started. Because Multidocs is a bit different. The old system, you didn't open Draw and Equation, you just double clicked or pushed the button and it opened it up for you. With Multidocs, partly to speed up the process, you have to have everything open before you start. So you open up Draw and Equation using that new app and when you go to Word, you'll see you've got a F of X tab and FX Draw and FX Equation will be uh, green. Uh, if they're not green or they're not there, there's something you haven't opened them up in time. Um, and 
you'll also, you might see some really complicated uh, toolbar like that, and you'll notice there's a simple mode. Uh, so being the people we are, I, I, I'd suggest to begin with at least, we click on the simple mode. If you see this, a red circle with an exclamation mark, it's because you have not yet started FX Draw and FX Equation. That's the first big difference between the old system and the new system. You have to start them up first, and it's trying to get you to do it. Um, I still get people saying they're grayed out, won't do it, <coughs> say start it up. Okay, using one of these multi-docs, the best option is to go and get one that someone else has written. There is nothing faster than using someone else's work. So if you can find someone who's, you, who's written a really good quality multi-doc and that material is getting more common, I mean, it's early days, but it's getting more common. I know in South Australia, someone set up a, uh, a website uh, where they're sharing documents that they've written, uh, the multi-docs materials. Um, they've asked why we can't do it. The reason we can't do that is because anything you write whilst you're employed by um, your employer belongs to your employer. You can't, we can't then share it because we don't own the copyright. So uh, if you go and do it amongst yourselves, fine, but we can't do that. So find an existing multi-doc and you load it into Word and uh, you push the regenerate all button, you go and make your cup of coffee and you come back to a change multi-doc. And this is the process in action. So I've loaded this sample test uh, and some, any of you who've come and see me at the stand will have seen one of those questions. Um, and it goes away and it does a lot of updating. It's not super fast. The slow bit is uh, it's us negotiating with Word. Um, that process can be a bit dodgy. Um, and at the end, it, it flicked between the two versions that it created. So a totally new test. And you'll notice there's multi-choice questions. Um, that was, that's put in there for the Americans. Uh, who seem to love multi-choice questions, and um, you'll see a quote from an American fellow a bit later. Uh, but the multi-choice option not only changes the numbers and the letters, uh, but also shuffles the responses, so the answer key is different. Okay. If you get to use someone else's work, it's quick, it's easy, it's one-button simplicity, you don't have to know how to use FX Draw and FX Equation, and typically, uh, we find in schools there's a group of teachers, maybe 20% of teachers, who love the product and use it and uh, you know, have explored all the depths of the FX Draw. And FX Draw is a huge program. Uh, every now and again someone says, how do I draw such and such? And I think, well, I wrote this um, and I still can't quite remember how to get to that particular feature. Uh, it's huge. Uh, but there's some people out there who love that and that's great. Um, the rest of the staff ask that person to do things for them. And um, yeah, so there's quite a few people out there who don't, don't know how to use the product, and that's understandable. It's complex, complex and big. Um, the great thing is, with this multi-doc thing, they don't have to know anymore. This means you don't even have to understand the mathematics. If someone's put together the, solu the solutions, and you have that one teacher who's a home ec teacher and has somehow been seconded into teaching one line on grade seven mathematics, they really are you know, half a period either in front or behind the students. Um, you can give them a multi-doc and say, push that button, walk away, and you'll get a new version of the test and the, solu the solutions will be right. Um, and that's going to save the, the good teacher in the department's time because they're not having to hold their hand through that process. Okay, there's not that many fully complete multi-docs out there at the moment. So the other option is to build a multi-doc. Now, what we've done is we've provided in the library a whole heap of pre-written uh, multi-docs materials. Now, we've basically designed these as we've been designing the software. So we've come across something we want to automate, like we might have looked at probability questions, where you want to look at how many vowels there are in the word mathematics and compare it to how many consonants or some sort of question based on that particular branch of mathematics. And we've developed some commands in Multidocs to allow you to do that. And then we've written a question so you can see how it works and use it as an exemplar 
for your own materials. Uh, but they're also, you can just download them, copy the question and the solution into your test and um, use them. So build them up out of existing stock, if you like. Uh, you might think, well, building a question, you, you know, sourcing all these little bits and pieces, that's a bit slow, and it is. Uh, but you don't have to do it all at once. As I say to quite a few schools in Perth are starting to do this quite aggressively and change their materials over to this format. Um, if you change one question in a test to be regeneratable, that's better than none. And if you change 50% of the questions, that's better than 40%. So you don't have to think of it as an all or nothing event. Anything you do pro provides flexibility in your teaching with that material. Okay, and that's what I just said. Yeah. Because multi-docs are just Word documents, you can type it whatever you like. They don't all have to be regeneratable. They don't all have to be static questions. They don't have to include FX draw or FX equation objects. If you want to cut and paste something from somewhere else, fine. We don't care. We're not trying to restrict what you do. We're trying to enhance what you do. Okay, then there's creating multi-docs. Uh, guru mode. So this is for the people who love nerding out. Uh, and I would hope that there's one, two, hopefully five in every school, but there ain't. There's a few in every school. Um, and they range in, uh, flex, they range in uh, excitement uh, from, yeah, I can, I can put up with that, to some people seem to be really getting into this thing. Uh, and thinking, oh yeah, I can, I can do this, I can do this. I have one fellow in Cyprus, of all places, who works at an international school, uh, and he's got right into multi-docs, and he's got his setup so that if he changes one little parameter, it translates all his material from Greek into English, or back, so he's, and, and changes numbers, and I, I look at some of the things he's produced, and I think, my good, I have no idea what you did. My, uh, anyway, okay. To create your own multi-docs, there are two crucial ideas. The first one is parameters, and the second one is an inline calculator. And understanding those two ideas, unless you understand them, you've got no idea what's going on. Parameters provide the variation, and inline calculator provides the ability to get the answers. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit before we actually get to play. The first one is when you create a parameter, we've decided that all of them start with a dollar sign uh, because we tend not to type dollar signs too much um, in equations. Um, if you really want to type a dollar sign, you can. You just type it twice, but that's getting a bit technical. And in fact, if you type it twice, it replaces it with the local currency symbol, but you're, you use double dollar sign, so you're good. Um, so dollar sign, and then a letter, and then numbers or letters, as you like. And they are case sensitive. So uppercase P is different to lowercase P. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, imagine that we've decided to go down this multi-docs path, and we're going to build a question, and we're going to use the Broken Dreams College final exam for specialist mathematics, so I think you call it extension which is four plus nine equals, or some variation of that. And we're going to skip out of PowerPoint for a sit, and we're going to do it manually, because it's more fun. So here we are in Word, Year 11 Specialist, final exam, instructions to candidates, complete the question, time two hours, six plus five equals box. Um, and because we're a bit concerned about these particular group, we give them a hint. So what I want to do is get rid of the maths difficulty and let's just concentrate on the, the process of turning this into something that can vary itself. So at the moment, this is all static. This is a static FX equation. And this is a static FX equation, which you normally probably wouldn't write as a, an equation, but we're going to need to do that later. So let's have a look at this. We'll go in to f of x. And this is the second difference in multi-docs. Normally, I would double click on that to edit it. Uh, in the old system, in the new system, you select it and then you push this edit button that's up the top here. And it'll open up in FX equation. So I've typed 6 plus 5 equals box. 
um, to get what I want. And there, what I want to do is add some variation. So I think to myself, what can I change about this? And that's pretty obvious. Like the first two numbers I can change. So I'm going to replace this with, uh, mouse, where, are we? where have you gone? There you are. I'm going to replace this first one with dollar sign A and the second one with dollar sign B. And it hasn't done anything yet because I haven't told the computer what this dollar sign A or dollar sign B is. So what next thing I have to do is down the bottom here, there's a dollar sign P button. That's where I start creating my parameters. And I'll go, oop, fire that up. And I'm going to say I want dollar sign A. <coughs> oh, this might be a bit small, so I'll read it out. Dollar sign A, I want that to range between 2 and 9. And on the next line, dollar sign B, I want to range between 2 and 9. And it'll be a bit small for you. Oh, I can do something about that. Oh. Aha. It'll be a bit small for you, but now it's bigger. There's a no, no repeats option. We found that when we were creating variation, often I didn't want it to repeat. So if the first one comes up with a two, I don't want the second one to come up with a two. So that's an option there. Um, and it, that's turned on. And I say OK. And it did two and two. That's OK. Um, the next step is to, the, the next button along is a P with a couple of shuffle arrows. That's the get some other values button. So if I push that, I'll get two values. And now because I've, I've turned on no repeats, it's not going to repeat. So four plus three, every time I push that, I get two new numbers. And when you're designing these questions, we strongly recommend you do this repeatedly and just see what happens, particularly when you get to the answer. And this answer is pretty simple, but when you get a long one, just watch what happens because pretty quickly, if you've designed a dodgy question, that'll, it'll appear because all of a sudden something will go zero on zero or the answer zero or something will cancel. So just repeat and go, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. That, they all make sense to my question. So let's leave it with nine and seven and click on the green button, and that's now back in my Word document, but now there's some parameters underneath there. The second thing is to change that hint, because I don't want 10 and 12. What I want is, uh, what do I want? The number one less than the sum, and the number one greater than the sum. So I'm going to type that. And here's the second part of creating a uh, multi-docs question. Anything in braces, curly brackets, gets calculated. So if I type 1 plus 2 and close the brace, it will do the calculation. Say 1 plus 2 and then type 1 plus 1, you idiot. If I say 1 plus 2 and put in curly braces, it does the calculation. So what I want to do is get A, add B, and take 1. That wasn't what I expected, but that's okay. Get A, get B, and add one. It's what I want to happen. Hey, get rid of the X and A mark. I'm having typing problems. Okay. Well, that wasn't what I expected. So what's the problem? The problem is that the first equation had some parameters, <coughs> but the second equation it's a, doesn't know about those. So what I need to do is link these up. Uh, e the easiest way to link them up is actually to copy the first one and just paste it in, because that carries the parameters with it. But we haven't done that. So we need to link those up. Uh, so we go to the first equation. We go to expert mode because we're doing guru things. And we copy the parameters from there. And then we go down to the second one and we paste the parameters and it's done. Right? Even cheers itself on. So now we have turned that very simple question into something that's much more flexible. And if I now go select that and say regenerate, 
it'll go along and go and find those two up, up those two objects in the document and it's now 2 plus 8 equals and down the bottom we have 9 and 11 as our hint. Right? And that's really all there is to it. When you, and what I found when I've been creating my own multidox type questions is I think about it to myself and think what can I vary and then start working through the process. So let's do another one. God, it's such fun. Okay, now we're at Mediocre High School. We're doing the Year 9 term test and this time we're factorising this, uh, this quadratic uh, trinomial and there's a solution. So uh, we'll go through the same process. We'll be a bit quicker this time. Or will we? So we'll edit this and uh, this is something I've just typed in as a static equation. Um, the easiest way... and one great thing about doing this is that quite quickly you understand the mathematics of what you're doing far better than you used to. Um, it's, I found that you know, to actually create a, a regeneratable question, um, I've, I understand what's happening far better than I used to. So let's do this. I would say let's create P and make that range between, we'll go 2 and 9 again. And we'll go Q. So this is a bit of a, a trick. Often it's best to start with the answers, so the two factors, and work back to the question. So I'm going to fill in, if they're my two uh, factors of that, uh, or two solutions of that quadratic, or that trinomial, B is going to come from those two numbers, and C is going to come from those two numbers. So how's your maths? What's B going to be? P plus Q, you happy with that? And C is coming from P times Q. Up. And so I'm using in my parameters some calculations as well, and that's fine, it's quite happy to do that. And I go back here, and this is going to be, that was B, and this one was C. And let's push the regenerate button again. And this is a good example of where it's really easy to create a question which gets possibly a bit too hard. The, the, my ranges are slightly too big and the difference between the easiest one and the hardest one is probably a bit big. Um, so just shrink them down a bit. We can change whatever we like. So there's my question. And we'll go to the answer. We'll copy the parameters from that one and paste it onto here and then go let's edit that and that would be plus Q plus P uh, and plus Q Okay. Could you just quickly repeat that? When you were linking the parameters, yep. did you, for that one, did you copy and paste the whole equation? I could have. I didn't. I oh. copied the parameters and pasted it. But I can certainly, if I copy this equation... I think you said last time you could do that. Yeah, I can. So and let's do it because I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot and you're quite right. So we, I've copied that and I've pasted it there. So it's exactly the same equation. Um, but it does bring the parameters with it. So it's... And you type over it. So, so if you, so it always links the P and the Q that you have copied. So if I wanted to kind of create a second question which didn't have P and Q. Okay, so in summary, parameters are variables that you can put into your question. They've got to start with a dollar sign. If you wrap something in braces, you do a calculation and you need to share them amongst the different objects for it to make sense. So parameters. I showed you that dollar sign P button, that gives you access to the parameters. You type them there, um, there's a few things on there. This area here is the current values of the parameters and also tells you how many variations there are in what you've created and that's a good idea to keep an eye on because uh, quite quickly you can get to hundreds of thousands of variations if you put enough in there. 
Um, the three simple parameters are the, the range parameter, which we looked at. This one's a range of 1 to 100 going up in point fives, but you can define whatever you like. List parameters are great. If you know exactly the, the, the numbers you want to put in, um, you can list them out explicitly. And expression parameters are where it's doing some sort of calculation. But there's lots of others. Co-primes will find a list of numbers which share no primes. Uh, range x is great if you want the numbers, say, 2 to 8 and negative 2 to negative 8, but you don't want negative 1, 0, or 1. Um, that range x, that particular command would go 1 to 5 and negative 1 to f negative 5. Um, and that came about because I was trying to create questions which had that level of variation. Uh, factors are 72. It'll just list them out and it'll choose randomly from those. Um, explode mathematics, which sounds like a year nine's dream. Uh, what that means is turn that into separate letters so we can analyze them uh, and look for vowels or consonants or how many M's there are. Uh, you can create randomized normal numbers. So that command will com create 30 numbers that have been drawn from a probability density function with a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of 15, which you can then use to draw a graph or calculate a, uh, a standard deviation, whatever you like. Um, and the multi command is for the Americans. Okay, the inline calculator, oh don't laugh, There's a, the, the quote's great. The inline calculator. Uh, so any time you wrap in, uh, in, ver in braces, it does a calculation. So here is doing 2 times pi times 3.2 and replacing it with the answer. And it's got the command round to two decimal places if you want. Uh, you can do rounding, you can do exact values, you can convert it to hexadecimal if you're bizarre. Uh, at the, that first one was just numbers. This one includes a parameter, dollar sign $R, which I've said ranges between 2 and 9 and the rope is 18.221, so it's done the calculation based on R currently being 2.9. There's lots of numeric commands, so you can find the numerator of a fraction, you can find the list of prime factors of a number, you can find the denominator, you can find the highest common factor of two numbers. You can use date commands. This is so you can write a statistics question and your graph doesn't always start at 1992 because that's the last time you edited the question. Um, you can have the question automatically turn itself into something that's remotely relevant. You can display your numbers in lots of ways. You can do them as binaries, decimals, exact values, mixed numerals, prime factor strings like 2 squared plus 2 squared times 5 times 7 to the power 4 if you want. To English is fun. To English means you can be grammatically correct. Come up with a number 17 from a uh, parameter but when you put it in the document, it comes out as a word 17. Um, so the English teachers don't try and skin you alive. Uh, to Roman turns your number into a Roman numeral. I think it goes up to about a million or something. I can't remember. Uh, it will analyze, numerically analyze functions for you. So you can put in a function and it will find a maximum, minima, maximum values, zeros. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it, I hope you're getting the idea there's a lot behind this. So we can do statistical commands, count numbers, find uh, lower quartiles, interquartile ranges, regression lines and slopes and intercepts. There is an if command. An if command makes this a programming language. You can go as far as you like with this stuff. Um, so it's like an if command, it's very similar to the if command in Excel. So if something is true, do this, otherwise do this. You can combine that with Boolean operators like and, or, or not, nor, xor. Um, you can say do something if the number's prime and do it if it's, do something different if it's not, whatever you like. There's data commands which uh, work basically with sets. So you can find the complement of a set, the uh, intersection of two sets, unions, vowels, most common thing that happens. You can sort them into order. The fundamental theorem of this multidox idea is if, if you find the right parameter and you combine it with the right inline calculator commands, you can do just about anything. The only thing that we really haven't got into is uh, trigonometric identities for that top level because the numbers are always so specific. It works if it's a 2 and it doesn't work if it's a 3. So putting variation into that, uh -uh, we haven't got there. But just about everything else, we've got in there. 
um, and you can create variation all through your exam. How far can you go? Well, this is a question that is, or it's an investigation that is freely available for you to download from the library. So if you own a subscription, you have access to all this. We're not charging extra, we're not saying this is an add-on. You have access to it today um, and the library today and you have full copyright use of the stuff in the library. You don't have to worry, you don't have to check with us. Uh, one of them is uh, what we call quad quandary. It's an investigative activity. It says you've got four fencing um, components joined in that order. What's the maximum area that you can contain? So it's a quite relatively high level trig question. I think I did the next bit as a audio description so you get to listen to a recorded version of me. This is Quad Quandary, which is an investigative activity that designed for 16, 17 year olds. It's a fairly complicated activity uh, where there is a section which students take home, which is the same for everybody. And then there's a validation test which has built in over a thousand variations. This is available for you to download straight away if you wish from FX Library and you can use it without copyright implications as a subscriber. To give you some idea of what's available to you, the validation test uh, is parameterized and all these numbers that you are looking at will change as we change numbers and the solutions are fully worked and fully parameterized as well so you can generate solutions to the test in the same process as generating a new version of the test. The numbers that are parameterized go as far as if I look at this set of axes, this set of axes is designed uh, for the students to draw on and it's important that we get the bounds of the axes suitable for the data that we know is going to go on it. If I edit that set of axes, you'll notice that if I right click on it, the dollar sign max is a parameter for the y maximum of the set of axes. This means that the extent of the axes is parameterized and changes based on the question that we're looking at. That's how deep parameters can get into your questions and your documents. Okay, back to the real me. Okay, this is a fellow, I think he's He's definitely, uh, I think it might be Texas. Sounds Texas. I just finished my final exam. 40 questions, all multiple choice. This is equivalent to the HSC. You do the Sorry, I can't do the accent. <laughs> you want to read it? <laughs> it took about seven minutes to regenerate everything, about 106 objects. Everything worked perfectly. Thanks to everything, he just had to decide how many versions. I think he decided about 28. He had 14 schools that he was writing for, um, for his school district. But the thought of 40 um, HSC questions determining a kid's future, personally I find um, a little bit off-putting. But anyway, okay, if you're sitting there feeling overwhelmed, um, fair enough. I personally think that this is going to impact, uh, I think going full guru mode, maybe 5% of teachers. Um, most teachers are going to build their own or use FX Draw to do a static question. But that doesn't matter. This means that everyone in your department gets to use the power of FX Draw, not just the guru, <coughs> because that test that they do go to uh, or that they produce gets shared around the whole department and hopefully school systems. Um, I want to see this stuff go out. This is about saving teachers time. It's not about um, uh, and providing good quality materials to all the kids, not just the, the guru's kids. Um, and you don't have to do it all at once. So what I'm seeing in the Perth schools that are going down this path is they're saying, okay, first we're gonna start doing all our stuff with this new way of using it in Word, rather than the old classic mode. So everyone's doing the same thing. And then we're gonna to say to the guru, we're gonna give you off uh, two periods off a week or whatever they decided. And that you, what your job is in those two periods is this term you're gonna do this test and this test and this test, and next term you're gonna do this exam, and at the end of the year, we'll have 12 documents in our system that have been parameterized and are useful for next year. And then next year, you're gonna do the same thing. And over a few years, uh, all of a sudden, um, 
that load on teachers has massively diminished. And that to me is a win. I, I think that's a huge win. And if this gets a few more people using the tools that we've created, fantastic. And if it makes me some money, even better. But that's not what it's about. It's about saving uh, particularly the guru teacher on a staff more time because, um, face it, they're getting hammered. All staff are getting hammered. But that guru teacher, the one that everyone turns to and says, can you do this? Um, they're, they're picking up a lot of slack at the moment. Okay, so that's really the presentation, but there's going to be some questions. Well, maybe there'll be some questions. Who knows? Or maybe you're just all busting a gut to get out and have some more food. 